Hey everyone, this is Eric here from Laughix. Got another video for you guys today. Got a very nice, already have it open, right? No, it's always a good time. We have it open ready. This is a 20, A2141 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. It's not the M1 version yet, but they're still very nice models. 16 inches, especially the 15 and 16 inches, are still extremely expensive. So it's very lucrative, really, to do repair on on these ones as even though they're still the intel ones they still do take the latest updates at least i'm making this video uh, hopefully that will continue for a while because they're intel processors and stuff but this one's no power has liquid spill so there's a problem so let me go ahead and take a look at it so i would see a little bit of something going under a very very small probably close to where the usb c is in this area over there a little bit of corrosion there and obviously some little bit of liquid stains everywhere else if you guys want to see a close up of the board it looks really nice right so let's go ahead and open it up. Um, we'll see really what the symptoms are and we'll go from there. So we got the board out. I see a little corrosion. Uh, looks like it's closer to this side over here. And we're gonna go ahead and actually take a look at it. Let's go under the microscope. That's probably a better way to actually take a look at it there because we can see it there's some, but we wanna make sure we see a lot better. And so you guys can see. So let's go ahead and take a look. And uh, this is kind of the sensor that when you open and close it, it sleeps, shuts off the screen. It's close to there, there's a USB-C connection. It's around there. Doesn't look too bad. You have a cap on this side, it's a little bit corroded. You can see a cap here, it's a bit corroded. Let's go flip it. I see probably a little bit more on the other side here. Flip it. You see this area is really impacted too. It's really dirty. Looks like a pile of like dirt there. It's a bit rusted. See this one side completely? See the one shiny, one's not? Usually you can tell where the ground is in the power area just by looking at something like that. Even though the corrosion is over there, usually the one that's more impacted, right, is usually more of a power area. Voltage going through. Same thing here. So this area. A little bit here and there. Kind of everywhere. Flip it. It's the power button area. Let's be okay. All right, so let's work on this area. I want to make sure this is really close to one of the ICs. There, we want to make sure that's actually fine too. Sometimes uh, liquid can get under here. It's very easy. See the solder balls under there. Let's go ahead and do a fix for it, and we'll work on it. So we're just going to clean up this area. We we'll use some alcohol, and we want to use a Q-tip because uh, some of the solder can be loose from. Um, the liquid damage and liquid spill and we don't want to be knocking stuff off especially if we use like a hard bristle or like a toothbrush or something this area isn't super impacted obviously the one chip looks to be pretty bad but we'll get a little bit back into that um, we're going to be looking at this area too and we're going to make sure that um, we're going to do the same thing use a little bit of alcohol clean off a little dirt to be first and then we're going to use um, some flux and a hot air just to clean up the whole area reattach all the solder and make sure everything else uh, looks to be pretty good. Um, some, most of these areas are actually good. You just need really a cleaning and just to, to reattach a solder. That should be it. Uh, the one cap, actually you'll see a little bit at the top there, actually doesn't need to be replaced. Actually the, the pad looks to be pretty good, so. Okay, so now we're moving on to uh, this chip here. And you can see that there is actually severe damage to the chip once we remove it. This is if we will go to the board in just a second there, but uh, you can see the damage underneath there. This is a BGA chip. Um, you can see all the little uh, solder pads look to be pretty bad. And there's a burn on the chip itself there from the corrosion. And let's go over to our screen cap. Uh, we see this is the U6960, nice. And if we go and um, look at each one of these, PV, 3V3, G3, hot, RTC, and this is a lot of other things going on with this chip. It's, ma it's a major power IC. So what we want to do is uh, we just want to do a replacement. But before we do the replacement, um, we don't actually have the, the footage of what we uh, did just to put it back on there. But we have lots of videos actually showing it. Um, is that you want to make sure because it's a BGA, you want to make sure that you clean off of the old area first. And then you just make sure you want to clean all the old solder and any other damage that's, that's happening there. And you want to clean that before you put on the new one. And the new one's going to have um, uh, the solder that's already part of the BGA chip and you can just put them on, slot it in and then make sure it's fine. We did do that and now uh, we at least finished that part of the repair. So we repaired the area. On these cases, um, when, when we took it out without the battery to plug it into, we did see that it was still giving 
a problem. It was getting like 20 volts. It would kick up at about ampage, and then it would go back down, hover around 0.01 amps, and then sometimes go up a little bit more. Kind of doing a very similar thing, but it's doing. Um, it's not powering on obviously with with this plugged in. So we need to see what's what else is going on with it. Now for these type of things, there can be um, some other type of issues, right? There can be a problem with. Uh, uh, it's still a physical problem with with this, but before we dig in deeper, because um, we do feel a little bit more confident on the repair, what we want to do is we want to go into something that's called a DFU mode. Now, what that is going to do is sometimes the T2 chip can get corrupted in something like this, especially if there is a liquid spill or any other type of damage to it, and it can get corrupted. So we need to sometimes do a restore for it. Now, there's a few different ways you can really do that. Um, usually, it's ideal if you have the same MacBook with the same OS I, especially one like this, this is a, a, but it's a 16 inch, right? So it's a little bit more uh, difficult to get the same exact one for that. But MacBook right, that does have that configurator. And I have one of these as a MacBook Air. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm just gonna bring it into like more of like a dual screen mode here. So you guys can, <laughs> not dual screen mode, but like you can see both here at the same time. I'm gonna be showing you a little process that you can be doing for this. And uh, this is where we're gonna help restore uh, what the issue is. So because we saw the symptoms, uh, we're thinking something else is going on, unless there's another short there. But we would like the repair, and let me turn this on. Okay, so, and you also need to have not just a MacBook, but you need to have one of these. This is the Thunderbolt cable, not a regular USB-C cable. Um, that's going to matter. So what we want to do is just log in. So, Okay. So I'm going to be going to this app here, and it's, it's called um, Apple Configurator. I have it already installed. You can go to the App Store actually install this one. Turn on the brightness as much as I can. Now it's we need to connect a device. Now when you connect these, you need to connect it to something called the master port on the Intel-based ones, or at least I know this one's uh, I think an A1932, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is A1932. The master port is closer to the trackpad on the left side here. So it's this one. I'm going to plug that in here. And also, we want to plug it into our patient Mac over here. It's going to be the same thing, especially on this model. Now, other models, it can matter, or Mac minis, it can make a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it. Let me move this over so you guys can see. I'm going to plug it into the port over there. All right, so this is going to be connected. Now, what we want to do when you're in this mode, uh, we have the configurator up. Uh, it's usually beneficial to get uh, the latest OS, if you possibly can, on here, because it will definitely be more consistent. Make sure that at least the configurator is up to date. Uh, I have Monterey. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see if it gives me a problem or not. Okay, so you plug in the power adapter there. So again, you want to hold down the power button, right shift, left option, left control for probably a few seconds. Okay, you see that? Now what came up over here, I don't know, oh, you guys can see that. But now it came up after we held it down for some time. I'm gonna put this on the side just for now because it's, it's a little bit harder just to show you guys. Now it says DFU mode. No, it's not derogatory, so don't worry about that. But uh, what we wanna do now is that we have this up so it's recognizing that this computer is connected because we did get a connection from it. So what you wanna do is you wanna just wanna right click it or you can hit just double tap. And this is important on depending on the steps that you want to do there. Now we want to go to advanced and we also want to go to uh, revive device. If you automatically go to restore, what that's going to do is that will also work as well, but you're going to be wiping the data, you're going to be wiping everything on here. So we don't want to do that. So uh, let's actually just do the revive first and see if that is going to help. So this is going to take a little bit of time. You see it's going to just do the download for the system there, unzipping system, and we'll let it go through. Try to zoom as best I can, but we're gonna let it install. We're gonna go ahead and see if it does make a difference there. I'm gonna let it on the side because I know sometimes it will take a little bit of time to do it. We'll see if we get an Apple logo to come up, and that's what we really want. That's what we're interested in, or see if anything else happens. So try to leave it on the side so you guys can see it as long as it goes. I'm gonna let it go for a little bit because I know sometimes this can take some time. So we'll be right back. Now you saw that, right? It did come up there. Uh, looks like the backlight went out. Ooh. 
See that? Oh, okay. Came up again, and then <laughs> went back away. What's well, there? So backlight came for like a second. See that? It is there. Okay, so we figured out what was going on actually with the backlight there. Uh, we did have a problem with this. This is your sleep-wake sensor that was on there. Looks like we just need to get a replacement for that. It was a bit corroded. Uh, we don't want to be using that replacement again. So that's when you open and close the laptop. It's just a sensor for that. Um, this one actually has a dedicated cable for that one. This model does, so it's pretty unique. But when we plug it back in, we turn it on. comes on very quickly, and you also see there is an Apple logo there. So everything looks to be pretty good. We get to know us pretty quickly, too. And the trackpad, yeah, there you go. And the trackpad looks good. The keyboard's fine, blah, blah, blah. You know, so uh, you saw the trackpad. Yep, looks good. So everything looks fine there. Um, and that's about it. So we'll replace that sensor. Uh, that's not going to be too fun. And that'll be it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on repairing the 16-inch A2141 for a liquid spill. You can see there's a lot of work that's really involved with this. We were able to at least get the board up and running and everything looks to be pretty good. So you can see whenever you tie in uh, extra firmware, security chips to it, you can lead to other problems. Even if you do a fix for it, you can sometimes not be sure to even fix it or not, especially when there's any, some type of firmware issue or some other type of security chip tied to it. So, but at least we were able to do a fix for it. Customers happy. Uh, the data was really the most important thing. We were obviously able to turn on, make sure it works and grab the data too. So everything looks to be great. So hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a like. Really, just to help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. See you guys next video. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.